And we've had a lot of general warnings about the state of the budget. Soon the Treasurer will lay bare in specific detail. He's describing as well it's going to be a confronting look at Australia's economy. It comes as the new Labor government signals a serious move towards tackling budget repair after years of eye-watering debt left in part by the pandemic. Live to political reporter Andrea Crothers. Andrea, Jim Chalmers giving a preview of this economic statement that will be handed down next week. Yeah, Thomas, when Parliament returns to Treasurer Jim Chalmers, he'll be handing down that economic statement that's on next Thursday, July 28. The Treasurer today is signalling he'll be painting a bleak picture, including spiralling inflation, which has led to interest rate rises, and all of this set against a backdrop of global food and energy insecurity, as well as increased debt, which we've seen racked up in part during the pandemic. Australia are on track, of course, for almost a, for a trillion dollars of debt come next year. The news in that statement will be in many ways confronting when it comes to our expectations of inflation, uh, when it comes to the impact of interest rate rises on growth, uh, when it comes to what this spike in inflation means for real wages, uh, there will be aspects of this ministerial statement that people will find confronting. Uh, my job is to paint the true picture uh, of the economy and our economic challenges. Tom, we've had a bit of a preview of just exactly the toll that these interest rate rises will be taking on the budget. The Treasurer has revealed that an extra $13 billion will need to be forked down in interest repayments alone over the next four years, taking that up to $99 billion over that forward estimates period. Now, that's because the interest rates in the budget handed down in March under Josh Frydenberg were uh, assumed on 22.2% rather interest rates over those four years. That's now been bumped up to 3.5%. Now, meanwhile, we also have some news on that planned review of the Reserve Bank of Australia. This would be the first review to be conducted in some 30 years. The Treasurer today signalled that he would be have more to say on the scope and time frame of that later this week. Yeah, so a bit happening there. Meanwhile, uh, the push to reduce COVID isolation time, the push comes from the New South Wales Premier, but seemingly it's not going to happen, at least for now. No, likely more in spring that this would potentially happen. If it does occur, of course, now you must uh, quarantine for some seven days. The push from Dominic Perrottet is to reduce that down to five days. Now, this really came into focus off the back of that stoush over pandemic leave payments. The reason uh, those were reinstated was because, well, if you're at home uh, forced by the government when you have COVID and you aren't able to access sick leave at some times, then they said, OK, well, we'll reinstate those $750 payments. Now, the Dominic Perrottet really leading the charge to reduce this time, but even he concedes it's unlikely to occur until after this winter peak. If you are sick, you stay at home. Uh, if you are healthy, you go to work. That is that is where we need to get to. I think we all want that. The question is, is now the right time to do that? Now is certainly not the time uh, for that to be reconsidered. That That's something that health officials will continue to look at. By the time we get to the end of September, I think we should be in a position to adjust those settings if the circumstances permit. So the Prime Minister there rejecting any push to do it any sooner. The Treasurer, he was also asked about those uh, pandemic payments and when would be sufficient for those to end. He says that, well, look, we've said the end of September and that's the time we believe that that would uh, be the adequate time for that to go, Tom.